Hey everyone, welcome back to this month's episode of DDC Spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about drone logistics infrastructure and give you a brief review of the last year. We have Michael Zara joining us in the warehouse to answer some of the questions. For having me. So Mike, there's a lot of misconceptions in the industry. A lot of people think drone delivery logistics and they're like, oh, I'm going to get a coffee to my door. Oh, I can get muffins. Oh, can the drone take my kid to school? So can you just tell us a little bit about the drone logistics infrastructure that DDC uses and how it's different to that of the industry misconceptions? The, the industry, the way it's really started um, and the use cases are really tied to the, the regulations. And in Canada, it's, it's Transport Canada. So uh, initially it started off with, I would say, applications that are remote. So we started off uh, focusing on First Nations um, and now we've obviously diversified into other applications. And, uh, and then the, the geography has moved to rural and now suburban. So we do have suburban operations, for instance, DSV, I would say is, is suburban in, in Milton. Uh, but the applications um, based on the regulations are really, I would say more B2B, uh, business to business type applications. You know, sure there are, um, you know, YouTube videos of other companies doing deliveries to somebody's home. Um, you know, a little string cardboard box, dropping off a coffee and muffin and that sort of thing. But today there's not really anybody doing that on mass. I would say more related to the regulations. The technology is always going to be ahead of the regulations. So our focus is on, you know, what can we do today? What can we do today to generate revenue? And then that is more, as I mentioned, more, um, remote, rural, suburban B2B applications. B2C uh, will definitely come, and it's most likely gonna be through, I would say healthcare applications, like our defibrillator program. I can see that going into uh, residential areas more quickly than you know, delivering pizza and that sort of thing. Um, so I think we will see uh, residential applications, but uh, more for medical to start. Can you walk us through the concept of drone spot any spot and the new term that's recently been introduced to DDC, uh, drop spot? So our preferred model, uh, and forgive me if a lot of our viewers have heard this before, but we do have some new investors and I'm sure some new viewers who, who don't know the, the story and the system as well. Um, so just to talk about it, our preferred model is to fly from a depot to a depot and we call the depot a drone spot and one of the components of the of the drone spot is high behind me where we keep a lot of the electronics and, and these sort of things. And a drone spot uh, is our preferred model because it's a very safe, secure, disciplined environment. It's got access control panels, barcode scanner for tracking packages. It's got security cameras. It's got an ADSB receiver for tracking um, aircraft equipped with ADSB. It's got a weather station. It's got a weigh scale. So it's a very safe, secure, disciplined environment. That's a, that's a drone spot. But we recognize that we're going to have applications where there is no infrastructure at the destination, whether it's B2B and, and certainly uh, B2C for medical or other type applications. And that's where we have something called a drop spot where we have minimal infrastructure, uh, could just be a fenced area. And then we also have something called a uh, any spot where we're delivering to a destination where there is zero infrastructure. There's no drone spot, there's, there's nothing. So. An example of that would be our defibrillator program where we go to a destination, we drop an altitude, um, we drop off the defibrillator or some kind of medical emergency supplies, for instance, and we fly back. So any spot means we can deliver to literally any spot where there's no infrastructure. What are some of the benefits of having a pre-installed drone spot as opposed to a any spot or a drop spot? A well, drone spot has the full infrastructure. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, security cameras and ADSB and a weather station and access control. So it's the ultimate in safe and secure uh, because a lot of our customers are looking for, you know, high value cargo, high risk, these sort of things. So that's a full drone spot uh, has all of that equipment. The, the drop spot is where you want a secure environment um, where you don't want, say, you know, the public to access a package. Um, but it's not as robust as what you would need for a, a drone spot for a high value or a high risk cargo. So it could be in the back of a, a warehouse where it's a private property, it's a controlled environment, but you still want some kind of a fence so it's not you know, publicly accessible and it's safe and secure. And then again, any spot is literally anywhere where there's zero infrastructure, which would be more 
uh, residential, emergency applications, medical applications, and these sort of things. So GNC's made a lot of announcements that are very exciting for us in the past few months. Can you explain and provide any more detail into some future projects we're gonna be working on or any other details of past projects that we've announced? And if you can further clarify the term LOI for us. Obviously I can only talk about uh, what's already public. Um, so I can talk about some of the projects that we have uh, underway through these, uh, these LOIs. And an LOI stands for a, a letter of intent. And uh, I saw some, I don't spend a lot of time on the stock boards, but I saw an interesting analogy that an LOI is like, you know, announcing the engagement ahead of the of the wedding. And I, I think that's, you know, that's an interesting analogy and I would I would agree to it. So we don't uh, obviously frivolously uh, you know, enter into an LOI just based on, you know, preliminary discussions. It's something that's fairly far along. We've got uh, a good alignment between us and the prospect and, and what they want to do and, and with the financial modeling. And, and the timeline and, and, and the equipment and what the system's gonna look like on the network. So it's, it's fairly far along in the process. And the, the LOI, the letter of intent, really is uh, showing commitment from the customer uh, to move forward to a binding definitive agreement uh, down the road. So the, uh, the purpose of an LOI is to uh, sort of, I would say, get commitment from the customer uh, to make sure that they're serious and that they're, we're working together on the modeling. And also it's an opportunity for us to be able to uh, offer some transparency, uh, transparency to some of the projects that we're working on. We can't really talk about things that aren't uh, public knowledge. So we could just wait until we sign the deal and announce it then, but we wanted to be able to give you know, some kind of guidance to the investor community uh, and other customers who are potentially looking at our solution. Uh, about some of the projects that we're working towards. So it's an interim step showing commitment from the customer. And then the next step is, is converting these LOIs to uh, definitive uh, binding agreements. So uh, we've announced a few, as you mentioned, in the last little while, very excited about that. And, and you know, we expect more to come, of course, um, but we announced um, with Jones Express, which I think we talked about uh, at the last video. Um, that's a very, very exciting project in, in Quebec for Condor. Condors, plural, we announced uh, IDP, we announced OEC, uh, we announced Apple Express Courier. Uh, so there's a few that we've announced uh, recently that we're very excited about and look forward for more LOIs to come and converting the existing ones into binding definitive agreements in the near future. And just yesterday on December 22nd, DDC closed a financial raise. Can you just talk to us a little bit more about what that bot deal means? The, uh, we had done a raise um, earlier in the year, so we were comfortable with our cash position. Um, and it's not like we were you know, spending months running around looking for, for somebody to give us money. We were actually approached and uh, there was an opportunity put in front of us for a, a bot deal raise. And uh, given that nobody knows what the future looks like in terms of the pandemic, the vaccine, the financial markets, you know, the U.S. election, you know, there's, there's always uncertainty in, in, the, uh, in the world outside of our control. We feel very comfortable with what we're doing, um, but we felt it was prudent to accept this bot deal raise. Um, cash is always, of course, nice to have. Um, so the underwriters for this, and it was a syndicate, uh, the underwriters uh, for this went forward and it was uh, oversubscribed, so the demand was extremely strong, which I think speaks to the, uh, to the credibility of the organization, what we're doing, people's faith in our future. Um, and it was so strong, the demand, that they actually increased the amount. So we ended up with a, a significantly higher amount um, of 12 point, um, I think the, the gross was 13.8 million. And finally, this last year has been a whirlwind of a ride. Can you just talk to us a little bit about some of the major milestones of 2020 and hopefully a vision for 2021 and some things to look forward to? Um, you know, part of this bot deal raise and, and people have, um, you know, talked about how we're going to use the money. Uh, there is a section in the prospectus for the raise um, called uh, use of nets proceeds or use of funds. Uh, so if anybody's interested in looking at how we plan to use this money in 2021 onward, they can always read the prospectus. Uh, that's all public knowledge. But um, the plans are for 2021 to accelerate our, our revenue growth, 
Uh, Canada is the priority, um, but there are some international markets that we're keen on. Uh, we announced our, our um, plans and uh, start to the entry into the United States market. Uh, we also announced an LOI for Africa and an LOI for India. Um, so we will see some international activity we expect in 2021. Um, so driving revenue in Canada, driving revenue internationally. We are a technology company, uh, so we want to uh, continue to enhance our functionality to our hardware and to our software and to our systems. So I think we're going to see that happening. And then uh, I think we'll see some other activities around international. There's some markets that maybe we didn't announce yet that, are, that we're looking at and, and deciding if we want to proactively enter them or enter them with a partner uh, like we did in Africa and India. So I think you're going to see things in, in Canada um, across a lot of use cases, a lot of vertical markets, some international, and then, uh, of course, moving the technology forward. So very, very exciting 2020, of course. I think we're very, very, very proud of what we accomplished, uh, especially with the pandemic around us. Uh, we drove the organization to first revenue uh, in March, uh, full commercialization, fully operational, customers signed, implemented, and live. So we're very, very, very happy with what we accomplished in 2020. And uh, we expect good things to come in those categories I mentioned earlier for 2021. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this month's episode of DDC Spotlight. Looking forward to having you join us for many more in the future. And to all of you who are watching, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your families. And again, thanks for taking the time to our viewers. And I appreciate the, the support of all our shareholders. You're all important from the largest to the smallest and I just want to wish you a very happy holiday season and a very happy uh, 2021 together with us and appreciate your support thank you stay tuned